In today's video, I discuss the main signs and symptoms that may indicate that you are magnesium deficient. Roll the titles. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before I jump into the video, just a quick reminder as always that I'm now offering the SIBO, organic acid, stool tests and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So magnesium is the fourth most abundant mineral in the body and magnesium deficiency is a fairly common occurrence and depending on the study and country in question, rates vary from 30 to 60% in terms of deficiency. Now the reason that this is such a big deal is that this mineral is responsible for over 300 biochemical reactions in the body and is directly involved in bodily processes such as blood pressure, immunological function, as well as cellular function to name a few. So the high rates of magnesium deficiency occur for a number of simple reasons. So firstly, because of Western junk food type diets, people are consuming less magnesium rich foods. In conjunction to this, there is also an issue of depleted soils in certain countries. In water supplies, the use of chemicals such as fluoride and chlorine often render magnesium inaccessible to the body as these type of chemicals bind to the magnesium. In addition to these external factors, usually outside of our control, individual choices could also leave us susceptible to magnesium deficiency. So high intakes of caffeine and sugar will deplete your magnesium levels very quickly. Other common risk factors for magnesium deficiency include you consume too many processed refined sugars, you take calcium supplements, you have a digestive disorder such as colitis or Crohn's, or you don't consume enough leafy green vegetables, or you have a gut infection such as SIBO. So with those out of the way, let's discuss the common symptoms associated with magnesium deficiency. So number one is heart disease. So if you have calcification of the arteries, then it is often a sign of magnesium deficiency. In a study published in Nutrition, Metabolism and Cardiovascular Diseases, researchers analyzed 34,553 participants who underwent coronary multi-detector computed tomography and serum magnesium level measurements from 2010 to 2012 as part of a health examination program. According to the analysis, low serum magnesium was associated with coronary artery calcification after adjustment for age, sex, BMI, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, systolic blood pressure, LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, serum calcium and phosphorus, HS, CRP, current smoking status, alcohol intake, and also vigorous exercise frequency. The ability of magnesium to prevent calcification in the arteries is why larger studies like the Framingham Health Study found that consuming enough magnesium correlated with a lower risk of coronary heart disease. Number two is mineral deficiency. So if you are deficient in magnesium, then it often goes hand in hand with other mineral deficiencies. So if magnesium is low in the body, then it can make it very difficult for other minerals to be absorbed and utilized correctly. So nutrients such as calcium, potassium, vitamin K, and also vitamin D. Number three, a very common symptom of magnesium deficiency is muscle spasms and cramps, and this is because magnesium plays a role in regulating muscle contractions. So in your muscles, calcium binds to proteins such as troponin C and also myosin. This process changes the shape of these proteins, which then generates a contraction. And magnesium competes with calcium for these same binding spots to help relax your muscles. So if your body doesn't have enough magnesium to compete with the calcium, your muscles may contract too much, causing cramps and also spasms. Number four is poor bone health. Now everyone assumes that calcium is the most important mineral for bone health, but the reality is, is that magnesium is equally as important. And this makes logical sense as magnesium is necessary to convert vitamin D into its active form so that it can turn on calcium absorption, all of which are pivotal for bone health. It also turns out that all of the enzymes metabolized in vitamin D requires magnesium as a necessary cofactor. This is why many people are deficient in vitamin D despite taking very high doses. When you take high doses of vitamin D, and if you are already low in magnesium, the increased amount of metabolic work drains magnesium from its muscle storage sites. That's probably why muscles are the first to suffer magnesium deficiency symptoms, such as twitching, leg cramps, and also restless leg syndrome. So number five is high blood pressure and hypertension. So blood pressure is the force of blood moving around your body, pushing against the walls of your blood vessels. 
So high blood pressure means your blood pressure is higher than the recommended levels, putting extra strain on your heart and your blood vessels and increasing your risk of a heart attack or a stroke. So magnesium will help reduce blood pressure by helping the body release prostacycline, a hormone-like compound that reduces tension in blood vessel walls. Number six, magnesium in the body creates energy by activating adenosine triphosphate or ATP, which is the fundamental unit of energy within the body's cells. Without proper levels of magnesium, the nutrients that you take in through food and supplements would not be metabolized into energy. Next up is number seven, so magnesium plays a pivotal role in hormone balance in your body. So for example, in cortisol regulation, magnesium calms your nervous system and prevents the creation of excess cortisol, which is one of your main stress hormones. So when your stress hormonal system is in balance, your levels of things like progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, and also FSH will be too. So magnesium also helps blood sugar balance. So magnesium helps to control insulin production and reduces sugar cravings and as such prevents blood sugar spikes. And this is pivotal when it comes to healing hormonal issues like polycystic ovarian syndrome. Also, not many people realize that magnesium actually makes the hormones progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. So if you're getting into perimenopause or just off of the pill and your levels are low, it's a great help to your body. So number eight is anxiety and depression. So there are a number of ways in which magnesium can help reduce anxiety and depression. So magnesium increases relaxing GABA. So one way magnesium counters stress is by binding to and stimulating GABA receptors in your brain. So as I've already stated, magnesium reduces your stress hormones. So excess cortisol contributes to things like anxiety, brain fog, depression, mood swings, memory loss, dementia, concentration problems, insomnia, and mental disorders of all kinds. And quite simply, magnesium restricts the release of stress hormones and acts as a filter to prevent them from entering your brain. Another area that magnesium will help with reducing anxiety and depression is that magnesium acts as an anti-inflammatory in the body. Inflammatory immune system messengers called cytokines activate inflammation in the brain, destroy brain tissue, and also alter brain function. And as such, magnesium helps reduce these inflammatory responses. Cytokines can play a role in anxiety depression, memory loss, apathy, slowed responses, irritability, inability to focus, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and increased risk of suicide. Number nine is sleep problems. So in order to fall asleep and stay asleep, your body and brain need to relax. On a chemical level, magnesium aids this process by activating your parasympathetic nervous system, the system which is responsible for getting you calm and relaxed. First, magnesium regulates neurotransmitters, which send signals throughout the nervous system and your brain. And it also regulates the hormone melatonin, which guides sleep-wake cycles in your body. So secondly, this mineral also binds to GABA receptors. So GABA is the neurotransmitter responsible for quieting down nerve activity. And it is the same neurotransmitter used by sleep drugs such as Ambien. So number 10 is digestive issues. So muscles within the digestive tract, including the intestinal walls, are relaxed by magnesium, which improves digestion as well as counterbalancing stomach acid and advances stools throughout your intestines. And obviously low levels can have the opposite effect and cause all manner of digestive issues. So number 11 is PMS problems. So if you have sufficient magnesium in the body, then it helps prevent menstrual cramps in women. It does this by relaxing the smooth muscle of the uterus and by reducing the prostaglandins that cause period pain. Next up is number 12, and this is heart irregularities. So just as it helps nerve function throughout the body, magnesium is important for coordinating the activity of the heart muscles and also the nerves that initiate your heartbeats. And if your magnesium levels are low, then you are more likely to be at risk for arrhythmias or irregular heartbeats and even heart palpitations. Number 13 is migraines. So there are a number of known causes of migraines and headaches in the body. Low levels of magnesium can promote cortisol spreading depression, alter nociceptive processing and neurotransmitter release, and encourage the hyperaggregation of platelets, all of which are major elements of migraine development. And number 14, electrolyte deficiency. So magnesium maintains a balance of other electrolytes such as sodium, potassium, and calcium. These electrolytes in turn support nerve conduction, muscle contraction, and maintain a normal heart rhythm. 
Now before I finish, I will just explain how much you need and what are the best sources of it. So if you're between 19 and 64 years old, then the RDA is approximately 300 milligram for men and 270 milligram for women. Some of the best foods around include green leafy vegetables, nuts and seeds, fruits such as figs, avocados and bananas, legumes, vegetables such as peas, broccoli, cabbage, green beans, artichokes, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, whole grains such as brown rice and oats, dark chocolate, tofu, and also chlorella powder. In terms of magnesium supplements, it depends on what your issue is and what type of magnesium that you take. So I would suggest magnesium malate for energy issues, magnesium theonate for brain issues, magnesium oxide for constipation issues, magnesium citrate for relaxation issues, magnesium chloride for better absorption, magnesium sulfate for muscle issues, and also magnesium glyconate for sleep issues. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.